Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at a theorem involved with conditional probability. Theorem 1, that's what I call it, I don't, don't think it's called Theorem 1, but for us in our videos we'll call it Theorem 1, the first theorem for conditional probability. And this says that if you have three events, event A1, A2, and A3, in the sample space S, and a good example again is tossing the die, the sample space then would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the six numbers you can get on a die. And let's say that event A is tossing numbers 1, 2, and 3, event 2 is tossing numbers 2, 3, and 4, and event 3 is tossing the numbers 3, 4, and 5. So what is the probability that you'll get A intersect, or A1 intersect A2 intersect A3? That happens to be this region right in here, so that must be uh, an outcome that is a, a part of A1, A2, and A3. Now, if you look at it, Notice that the number 3 occurs in all three events. But in other words, it's an outcome in all three events, so therefore you can see that A1, A2, and A3, if you do the intersection between all of them, you get the number 3. A single outcome will belong to that. So the, pos the probability, if you then say, well, what is the probability of getting the intersection of A1 with A2 and with A3? Since there's only one possible number, one possible number you can have, which is three out of a total uh, sample set of six outcomes, that would then be one out of six. Now the theorem says that you can find the same result, the probability of A1 intersected with A2 intersected with A3 is equal to the probability that A1 will occur. So the probability that you get A1 out of a sample space of S times the probability that A2 will occur, provided A1 has occurred, right? Of course, if A1 has not occurred, then obviously you can't have an intersection between A2 and A1, because if A1 doesn't occur, there's no possible way that you can then get an intersection between the two. Uh, so you then find the probability that A2 will occur once A1 has occurred, times the probability that A3 will occur once you have the intersection between A1 and A2. So in other words, in order to be able to get this, you already have to have at least that this here has occurred so you get the, the intersection of all three events to occur. So that's what, the, that's what the theorem says. Now let's see if we get the same result using the theorem to kind of try it out. So first of all, what is the probability that A1 will occur? An independent event, A1. Well, the sample space is six possible outcomes and A1 has three of those six outcomes, one, two, or three, so the probability that A1 will occur independent of anything else is three out of six. So this is equal to three divided by six times the probability that A2 will occur once A1 has already occurred. So to find the probability that A2 will occur once we know that A1 has occurred, we now have a smaller sample, a sample space. It used to be six, six possible outcomes, but if we know that A1 has occurred, now there's only three possible outcomes, and if we then find, want to find the probability that A2 has occurred, once we know that A1 has occurred, you can see that there's only two out of those three possible, so the probability there would be two divided by three. And now we have to find the probability that A3 has occurred, provided that the intersection of A1 and A2 has occurred. So let's look at the intersection of A1 and A2. So the intersection would be the numbers 2 and 3. That's the intersection between A1 and A2. That means that we now know that we either threw a 2 or a 3, that's what this means, provided that A1 intersection with A2 has occurred. So what is now the probability that A3 will occur? And A3 can either be a 3, 4, and 5, but only one of those three, 3, is possible. So the probability then would be that if this has occurred, there's a 50-50 chance that you either had a 2 or a 3 with these possibilities, so it would be one half probability. So if we know that we either got a 2 or a 3, what is the probability that you'll get a 3? Well, that would be just one out of those two, so therefore it's one half probability. Now, if we simplify that, so you can see that this is equal to, well, the 3's cancel out, so this is a 1, and this is a 1, and the 2 cancels out with the 6, that's a 3, so we get 1 third times 1 half, which is 1 sixth, and notice that it's the same result that we got when we simply found the probability of, again, the intersection of the three events. So you can see that this theorem does appear to work, and so now we can go ahead and apply that theorem. So in any case, whenever there's three independent events, A1, A2, and A3, 
We can then say that the probability of the intersection of all three is equal to the probability of the first one occurring times the probability of the second one occurring provided that the first one has occurred times the probability that the third one will occur provided the intersection of the first and the second one have occurred. And that is theorem one for what we call the conditional probability. And that's how we do that.